situation. So if the CEO is mediating that situation between sales and product, what do they do? How do they balance this? How do they deal with this? So I often don't see them balance it. My going in assumption is that if the CEO is formally from the sales side of the house, mm -hmm. then the answer is you must do it. You must find a way, stop making excuses, right? And, and that works, let's say once a quarter, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work four times a quarter on the four largest deals, right? Yeah. So there's this sort of generalization problem. There's this memory problem where, um, we've closed that deal in week three of the quarter. It's now week six and there's another deal. Uh, I've flushed all that from my brain. I've already marked the revenue on my page and it's time to move on, right? Um, mm -hmm. The other I see is that um, if, if we've got somebody in the CEO chair who comes from the, what I call the maker side of the house, yeah. development, design, product, all of the sort of process driven, get things out the door, um, they're pushing back on the sales team really hard in general. And it's hard for them to see that this one deal actually merits the override. It merits the, um, the escalation, um, and, and it's uniformly no. So, so I think it's really hard for CEOs to find the gray area, the space where instead of always saying yes, or always saying no, we actually take it apart and see if we have one or two opportunities per quarter that mm. really rate the pull the red handle special treatment thing. It's, it's too much or too little. I see that. Yeah. I'm, I was actually having this very conversation this morning with a CEO who has come from the product world. And he talked a lot about some of the challenges that CPOs do have is they don't have that commercial experience in quite the same way. They don't have that commercial urgency. It's not kind yes. of in their DNA. So they don't often have an appreciation for it, right? They just see these challenges that sales throw their way as being, you know, last minute curveballs that are, you know, just unsettling their ship, which they want to keep as steady as possible. So yes. it strikes me what seems to happen in both of these situations is there's not a huge appreciation for the other side in the negotiation. And I think that certainly sounds like a place to start from, from the CEO is to, is to understand, well, you know, do we actually understand really what this means if we do that? What do we, what does this right. actually mean on both sides if we make this particular change? Right. And, and, and I'm very, very conscious of the tremendous pressure that CEOs are under. 